All right, check out this headline from earlier today. Senator Lindsey Graham is on the warpath to get Kavanaugh confirmed. All right, now that we have five reported allegations of varying degrees of credibility at this time, let's find out where Senator Graham stands right now. He's got a key vote on the Judiciary Committee. They may exercise that as soon as uh, Friday. But first, your questions tomorrow. Good to see you for a preview. Thank you. What do you intend to do with your time tomorrow with this uh, Dr. Christine Blase Ford, the accuser original? Well, we have a uh, lady who is a professional prosecutor who will ask questions of Dr. Ford, and uh, I may ask some questions of uh, Judge Kavanaugh. We'll see. What do you say to those? I, I believe it was Senator Coons, obviously a Democrat, mm -hmm. who said yesterday that you all are trying to hide behind this prosecutor and duck your responsibility to ask questions. Uh, number one, uh, Senator Coons is a good friend, but he also said the burden was on Kavanaugh to prove that he wasn't at a party 35 years ago, but nobody will tell him the date of the party or the location of the party. Joe Biden from Delaware had the right approach. Everybody is presumed innocent when they're accused of rape or sexual assault, except Kavanaugh. So I would tell Senator Coons uh, <clears throat> that this is the most disgusting thing I've seen in over 20 years in politics, that I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan. I can't imagine me doing to them what y'all are doing to Kavanaugh. I'm disgusted with it. I'm more committed to voting for Kavanaugh than ever, and all of these allegations to me just are falling apart and I'll be glad to go to go through all five of them. Well, let's talk about the fifth one because you okay. actually were involved in the chain of command of sure. reporting this. Senator Whitehouse, yes. a Democrat on the committee, came to you with this yes. allegation. What happened? So Senator Whitehouse came to me a couple of days ago and said a constituent from Rhode Island told him about an incident back in the 80s where Kavanaugh and uh, uh, Mark Judge, Judge mm -hmm. supposedly took a young woman out on a boat and mistreated her. And this woman uh, told him about it. He went to the boat and beat them both up. I said, well, I'll make sure the FBI takes it seriously. He did it the right way. He came to me. Together we went to the FBI and it's completely fallen apart. Senator Whitehouse did the right thing. You need to run these things down. Number four. The allegation uh, is that an anonymous person wrote a letter to Cory Gardner. And I think we have the letter in the envelope yeah, that we can put up just so people can yeah. see how this report came in to Senator yeah. Cory uh, Gardner, who is a right. Republican out of Colorado. Right. Right. Uh, it's got no return address, right. um, but there's some. You know why we know about there. it? Because of NBC. To my friends at NBC, you know why conservatives distrust you so much because of stuff like this? You would never print an anonymous letter accusing a liberal nominee of wrongdoing. There is no journalistic integrity left when it comes to Trump and his nominee. Nominees. The idea you will report on an anonymous accusation uh, and give it credibility says all you need to know about where our media is when it comes to Kavanaugh and Trump. You were a prosecutor for many years. Yeah. So how do you traverse this? I mean, how do you go through sure. if we're now in a situation where uh, we are going to hear from Dr. Ford tomorrow, sure. which I think is good for everybody to, to be able to have her tell her story, <clears throat> to assess her credibility, to have the judge answer her specific allegations. Um, but what about a situation where we're now at the point where anonymous right. letters right. and tips are called in and trickling and with no well, names attached to them? Right. I mean, how does the judge defend himself? Well, number one, I'm going to look at this from sort of a judge's point of view. I used to be a judge, by the way. Uh, an anonymous letter goes nowhere because it's anonymous. How do you defend yourself? So this is about NBC. It's not about Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, the, the third accusation, I'm supposed to believe that when he was a sophomore and junior in high school, senior year in high school, that Brett Kavanaugh ran a uh, gang rape ring all over Washington, D.C. He drugged women routinely and was involved in gang rapes, and that the person accusing him of this went to 10 different parties at where least, this. It says, at least yeah, 10. at least 10, and never told anybody about it, never warned her friends, never called the cops. It comes from the Avenatti world. It makes zero sense. I don't believe a reasonable person would keep going to parties where people are drugged and raped. And not tell anybody about it. The second allegation was not even worthy of print by the New York Times as to Miss Ford. I think something happened to Miss Ford, but she cannot tell us where and when regarding Judge Kavanaugh. He says he doesn't know Miss Ford, and all the people named by Miss Ford as having been at this unknown location say it didn't happen. So what am I supposed to do? You couldn't get a warrant in a criminal setting. Probable cause requires you to determine the location and the time and have some corroboration. So there's five allegations. Uh, varying degrees of reliability. All of them, in my view, are unreliable. Here's the only thing I know that's consistent. When it comes to Judge, Judge Kavanaugh, there are no rules, there are no boundaries. The liberals are trying to destroy this guy. And to my conservative friends, where have a lot of you been? Do you not see what's happening here? You cannot figure this out. Do you really think Brett Kavanaugh is a gang rapist? 
when he was in high school and nobody knows about it until 2018? Well, the FBI didn't do a very good job, but for the six previous background checks, if they missed all of this and it's been out there for 30 years. But let me ask you this because yeah, you mentioned Michael Avenatti. It's not Avenatti. the FBI's problem. <laughs> um, the, uh, Michael Avenatti says this, why are real Donald Trump, Chuck Grassley, uh, Senate Majority Leader and Lindsey Graham and Brett Kavanaugh afraid to get the FBI involved and call Mark Judge to testify? Answer, because they want to hide the truth from the American people and they know Kavanaugh is guilty. Why not persuade the White House to go ahead and ask for the FBI investigation, clear him, clear his name if he's innocent, and then he can get onto the bench. This is a game. An if you really wanted an FBI investigation as a Democrat, and this guy's running for president as a Democrat, potentially, you had the allegation by Ms. Ford in July. She hired a lawyer in August, late July. She took a polygraph August the 7th. She talked to the Washington Post in July. So you had plenty of time to bring this forward. Why did you hide it from the American people? Why did you not tell us about it when you found out about it, like Senator Whitehouse? This is a coordinated effort at the last minute to stop a nomination, and they say openly the goal is to keep him off the court, get the Senate back in 2018, and deny President Trump a second nomination. I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan because I thought they were qualified. What I see here is a coordinated effort to destroy a good man's life by allegations that do not hold water that you could not even get a warrant for. And I'm fighting back, and to my Republican colleagues, if we abandon Judge Kavanaugh, I hope people abandon us because we would deserve it. Well, a number of your voters, or at least a lot of my Twitter followers, say that's how they feel about the midterms. Well, they should so. feel that way. I don't know if you're going to be able to resist your uh, prosecutorial uh, bet <laughs> on asking questions tomorrow, but we'll be watching every second and uh, watching for Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh's Thank testimony. Thanks for coming in. Thank